good day or good evening, whichever that happens to be for you. Welcome to the beginning episode of Creation, Genesis, and Origins. I'm your host, Dick Fisher, and with me today is my co-host, Ken Miller. In the episodes to follow, we will explore the beginning chapters of Genesis and combined with the revelations of modern science and the revealed history of the ancient Near East, we will hopefully reach a consensus honoring the validity of all three embodiments of knowledge. We totally embrace the inspired Genesis text as it was originally recorded in Hebrew. For the English translation, we will reuse the King James Version, which can be downloaded from our website. We respect the integrity of the scientific community and take our science from textbooks and legitimate working scientists respected in their field. We will see also that the history of the ancient Near East can be helpful in resolving difficult passages of scripture that have unfortunately been badly translated and misunderstood over the years. The scripture verse that inspires us is Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that warning from the prophet gives us our mission to provide that essential knowledge that will enable us to understand the historical context in which Genesis was written and have respect for its integrity as the legitimate history of the covenant peoples. Today we will begin to examine the very beginning, Genesis 1 and the Big Bang. What does science tell us about our amazing universe, how it got started, and how did the original author of Genesis describe that singular event? What we will discover is that the writer of Genesis got his basic facts right and in the proper order. However, due to some translation mistakes and errors in interpretation, it has seemed to many scientists and even Bible scholars that the inspired text is out of step with scientific facts concerning the age and the manner of inception of our universe. So what do we know from nature? Is Big Bang cosmology inconsistent with the Genesis 1 narrative? Let's see. Preston Cloud, in his book, Cosmos, Earth, and Man, said the question of first causes transcends the bounds of science. Robert Jastrow said, what is the ultimate solution to the origin of the universe? The answers provided by the astronomers are disconcerting and remarkable. Most remarkable of all is the fact that in science, as in the Bible, the world begins with an act of creation. The beginning of the universe was light. God's very brilliance shone forth and manifested itself. Time, matter, space, and energy were at once created. The first particles to emerge were photons and neutrinos. These were almost instantaneously followed by electrons, positrons, protons, and neutrons. Initial temperatures were beyond comprehension, such as 100,000 million degrees. The universe was filled with light. This is the Keck Observatory, the world's largest optical telescopes. Together, these two telescopes have eight times the collecting area of the Mount Palomar Telescope and more than 30 times that of the Hubble Space Telescope. The Keck Telescope is 36 independently driven mirrors. Uh, computers control the movement of these mirrors so that they work in sync as one gigantic 400-inch telescope. It's also very precisely figured down to a molecule's thickness. With sensitive light and radio wave gathering instruments like this, we can look up billions of light years into space to the very limits of the cosmos itself. But as you look out into space, we're also looking back in time. This is where astronomy is unique among the sciences because it alone directly observes the past. As a matter of fact, astronomers are always observing the past. Light waves, radio waves, and all other kinds of electromagnetic waves may seem to reach us instantaneously, but they don't. They seem to because they travel so fast. Light speeds through space at 186,000 miles per second fast enough to circle the globe seven and a half times 
in a second. When we look at the sun, 93 million miles away, we're seeing what it looked like when the light left it about eight minutes ago. Likewise, when we look at the moon, we're seeing it as it appeared about two seconds ago. When we look out to the stars, we're seeing them as they were thousands, millions, even billions of years ago. The farther away an object is, the longer ago its light began its trip through space. The distance light covers in a year, about six trillion miles, we call a light year. Light years offer a more convenient method for indicating vast distances. The most distant galaxies ever detected by astronomers are about 13 billion light years away. That means the light from those galaxies took 13 billion years to arrive on Earth. As we gaze at this galaxy, we're looking back in time at how it appeared 13 billion years ago. In a complicated process, photons emanating from the Big Bang were absorbed and re-emitted rapidly, being unable to propagate freely. Ultimately, electrons and photons combined to form atoms, at which point the photons were released and propagated as light. Nuclei were joined up with electrons to form the first atoms of hydrogen and helium. As these billions upon billions of atoms formed and were forced out into the expanding space, gravity began to coalesce them into larger and larger clusters. Enormous clumps of matter formed masses of clusters that grew gradually into galaxies. Gravity drew the atomic particles tighter and tighter. The heat of the contraction caused the hydrogen gas to initiate a fusion process, and stars began to form. Eventually, atomic reactions took over to comp complete the life cycles of stars. By the same process, star formation is still taking place today. When a star like our sun burns off its hydrogen gas, atomic particles of increasing complexity are cooked down. If a star is of sufficient size, it explodes at the end of its cycle into a supernova, showering masses of debris into space. It appears our solar system was the benefactor of one or more supernova explosions some five billion years ago that spun off a nebular cloud of basic raw materials to form our planets. In March of 2013, the European Space Agency released an image of the cosmos taken by its Planck satellite that yielded a date for the beginning of the universe of 13.82 billion years. With the age of our solar system and Earth at about four and a half billion years, we can see that the cosmos had nine billion years of history before our own Earth and our array of planets even came into existence. After the space debris had contributed just the right mass and mix of materials we would need, the Earth went through a nifty rebirthing process about four billion years ago. Due to gravitational compression, cosmic bombardment, and radioactive heating, the entire planet performed a meltdown so that heavier materials such as iron could sink to the core with the lighter elements rising toward the top. Earth was blessed with a handy assortment of heavier elements that we can appreciate today. An abundance of iron has afforded us a magnetic field protecting us from cosmic radiation and solar wind. A high amount of radioactive elements played a key role in remelting the Earth and it keeps our core just hot enough for a mantle with a plastic viscous upper layer. A high component of hydrous water forming compounds added an extensive water supply, a critical factor in supporting life. 